welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Legacy, and I have a brew challenge from Patreon subscriber Joyami. Joyami reached out to me with a theory, a manifesto. I'm not quite sure how to qualify the words that were sent to me, but basically they were like, I've been watching your videos and decided to count up how many times you speculate what's in your opponent's hand before taking a game action. And in your last video, it was over 80 times. And what if we could just look at the opponent's hand and not have to speculate on those things? And then what would we do if we had that perfect information? And went on to ask me to brew a legacy deck that uses Glasses of Urza to some effect. Glasses of Urza is a one-mana artifact that taps to look at target player's hand. I remember when I was a kid, I had a copy of this. It went in every deck. It just costs one. There's no mana requirement, and the information's amazing. So I have something of a history with this card. One of the tricks, though, is that good constructed magic players, one of the things that is going on in their head is that they know what cards are playable in the format. They know what cards are in stock versions of deck lists. And then they start solving for X, just like eliminating what your opponent can't have based on what they didn't do or what they did do. But you can usually figure out what cards are in your opponent's hand within reasonable margin to play around them. And spending a card, a precious magic card, to be able to do that is frequently not worth it. However, I accepted the challenge all the same. With one caveat, I started brewing, and then I realized that Glasses of Urza is not even the best way to do this thing that Joyami wanted to do. So Glasses of Urza is not appearing in this deck. However, Telepathy is. One blue enchantment. Your opponents play with their hands revealed. This is better than Glasses of Urza, because Glasses taps to look at target player's hand. You get one little look, and then the hand is a secret again. And in a format defined by the card Brainstorm, tapping to get one look isn't always enough. Like if I tap my glasses of Urza, see my opponent's hand, and it contains a Brainstorm, then I cast Cabal Therapy, and then they Brainstorm. Now I'm guessing again, and I don't even have the information that I built my deck to be able to use. But Telepathy will see the hand at all times. I can put Cabal Therapy on the stack. They brainstorm in response. I see all of the cards that they see with Brainstorm. I see what they put back, and then I see what the hand looks like at the end of it, all before Cabal Therapy resolves. This is just a better version of the same thing, which is a quite a strike against Glasses of Urza, because I don't think we actually want this effect at all, just if we're playing good, clean magic with the intent to win all our matches. And Glasses itself is not even the best one mana way to have this effect. So sorry, Glasses of Urza. Tough start for you. However, I have built kind of a fun deck that uses telepathy to its advantage. I started with the obvious things of what do we do if we know our opponent's hand at all times and Cabal Therapy. Cabal Therapy is insane when it hits on the front half. And Meddling Mage, just I know what you got. And now you can't cast it. This just becomes kind of a build your own Tide Hollow Sculler with even better implications against combo decks and stuff where you don't have to name a card that's in their hand currently. You can name the Doomsday that they're digging for. So four copies of Cabal Therapy, four copies of Meddling Mage were in there. And then the next thing to solve for was, what do I do if I know my opponent has their shields down? Like if I'm just... Azorius Control or Jeskai Midrange or something like that. I don't really care if the shields are up or, the d or down. All of my plays are built to get incremental card advantage. So I wanted some kind of combo flourish where it's like, oh, you have nothing and I know you have nothing. Now you're dead. 
I tried to tuck some telepathies into a cephalid breakfast shell, and that just felt like I was making cephalid breakfast worse in favor of the meme, which is not what I wanted to be doing with the brew. So I got into a space where what combos also work well with Cabal Therapy, which led me down the Rector Trail. Arena Rector, when it dies, you can exile it. If you do, put a Planeswalker from your deck onto the battlefield. Knowing that your opponent can't interact with this on the way down, or knowing they don't have Graveyard Hate to punish it once it's dead, is all good information to know that you can shove an Ugin or Kaya into play. Ugin and Kaya, these are the Planeswalkers I've chosen at the top end. Both are, air quotes, castable if I draw them and the game goes long. And they're both game enders in their own right. All of this tucked into a normal Brainstorm, Ponder, Swords to Plowshares, Force of Will, Legacy, Blue Card, Shell. And my support unit that I chose, uh, there was room for one more thing the deck could do. I had a build with Stoneforge Mystic. I had a build with a lot of Monastery Mentors. Uh, and where I ended settling was Staff of the Storyteller, because this is also good with Cabal Therapy. You're not too sad to sacrifice a 1-1 Spirit to get another round with Cabal Therapy, plus it draws a card on the way through. And Monastery Mentor makes tokens that can refill the Storyteller. Kaya can make tokens to refill the Staff of the Storyteller. There's some little synergies here and there, but mostly we're trying to shove a big Planeswalker into play after disrupting our opponent with Meddling Mage and Cabal Therapy. And this is where I ended up after being asked to build with Glasses of Urza. Honorary Glasses of Urza Telepathy is our the banner we're waving in this league. Let's go do this thing. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of 7 Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. 7 Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire 7 Factor or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at 7factor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to 7 Factor's YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. We're on the play for round one, and I am chuckling wildly to myself. BRB, screenshotting this and tagging Chris Pakula immediately. Uh, Snapkey, this is what the deck is for. Hey, let's see how our opponent feels about revealing all their secrets to me. Oh, yeah. Look at this friggin' deck. No wastelands in sight. Spell Pierce not gonna work. Now the real challenge is figuring out where I'm going to put this hand that is both visible to me and to you viewing without obscuring too much of the board. Uh, how about right here? Okay, so I'm going to Meddling Mage Swords to Plowshares and then Meddling Mage every other card in their hand. Do you see the combo yet, opponent? Do you see what I'm doing? Swords to Plowshares on lockdown. <laughs> uh, we're having a good time this is not a good place for the hand now that there are actually things in play oh here we go I can just slide it along the edge here okay I like this situation I'd love to draw land and get something going here with the ponder cool we did it oh I could cast this ponder and they spell pierce it and that's fine I will in fact cast this ponder I can't play the Sword Supply Shares. Land number four is whatever. Brainstorm, kind of. I mean, I'll take a Brainstorm in the spot. Don't shuffle. Fetch. And now I'm going to try to Meddling Mage. We assess what dual land I want here. It has to be blue to cast Meddling Mage. Is the second white or the second black more important? That for the Storyteller is a double white card. Okay. I'll go white here. Okay, so they can force of will this and try to put True Name Nemesis into play next turn, or it can resolve and they lose another card. They're going to lose True Name Nemesis. It is the real answer. Force Pitching Spell Pierce was the answer here. And I'm not going to run this Meddling Mage into Snapcaster as Ambush Viper. The True Name is something I'm going to have to figure out as this game goes on. Very time raveler, okay. We'll see if they invest in that first or the true name. True name it is. Ugin beats this. 
Hey, I'm gonna brainstorm first. I'd love to find Cabal Therapy. Oh no. Two swords to plowshares. A card that I cannot cast. Planes and Meddling Mage. I think I'm gonna name Teferi here. Fairy Time Raveler. Also locked down. And now let's uh let's look at each other for a little bit. I am winning the damage race. And Snapcaster can change that. Oh, this Force of Will's a bummer. Yeah, they're not attacking. Swords of Plowshares is the draw. I'm going to hold on to this Brainstorm for a turn. I would like to see all new cards with it. Stoneforge Mystic. Uh oh. <laughs> Everything's going how it's supposed to, and we're still just losing. Stoneforge gets Cauldra. I mean, Ugin still stabilizes this board. I need to spin up a Cabal Therapy on this Brainstorm. B Storm. There's Cabal Therapy. Good news. Uh, I can just win right now, right? I put back the Plows. Oh, no, I'm one mana short. Okay. Disappointing. Put back the Plows. And then... Cabal Therapy taking Force of Will, or I could set it all up to do it next turn, and then I know it's in their hand. I think I'm going to set up to do it next turn, and just cast Ponder now. Ponder. If I find another discard spell, I can start poking them. After the Storyteller is a way to rebuild. I could Prismatic Ending the Stoneforge now, which might get Force out of their hand. Yeah, I'm kind of into this spread, actually. Don't shuffle, prismatic ending, white, blue. Unfortunately, if they force, I can't follow up with therapy because I ran out of colored sources here. But they are forcing. Pitching to fairy. That's fine. Cool. Now my cabal therapy is even more potent. Narset. I don't care about that one very much. Here comes Cauldra. Ultra is colorless, but the germ token is black, so Ugin can consume it. And they're getting in for the full boat of damage here. Yeah, drawing staff of the storyteller. I'm putting Ugin into play, deleting the board. Ball therapy, target you. Let's see if they want to drop Snapcaster in in response, or if they just let me strip their Narset. Ooh, I should look up Ugin real quick. What is the loyalty on this thing? Seven. So if I go minus three, I'll be at two. Or minus three, I'll be at four. And then when they attack it with Snapcaster, yeah, that's fine. I want to take Narset. Narset Parter of Veils. God, what's happening? Okay, that's there. Oh, right, I get. Oh, I'm supposed to take Snapcaster first. I forgot I get it. A, a flashback. Now Snapcaster. Oh, no. Yeah, now it's Snapcaster. It still doesn't get to be in play because Ugin will eat it. Yeah, this doesn't matter, but yeah, I was supposed to take Snapcaster first just to make sure they can't do anything. Uh, yes, get Ugin. Then Cabal Therapy. My name's Snapcaster Mage. I correctly realized that casting it doesn't matter. And I'm not going to miss my four damage. That's free money. And I'm going to minus three Ugin. Okay. I lose my telepathy and all my meddling mages, but their hand is Swords to Plowshares versus Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Not a good matchup. They just played a land, sure. Force of Will. Gonna go upstairs on my opponent's life total. And right now I have a choice, which is just hold up Force of Will or get something going with Staff of the Storyteller. What do I think could happen to my Ugin is the question. And I'm not sure, but I don't think I need to worry about it. Oh, I love this. Uh, Ugin the Spirit Dragon, fine. We'll concede the staff of the Storyteller, though. <laughs> it's too good. Legacy player. Okay, we got, we got some Stone Blade going on here. And the plan got a little dicey for a while, but eventually it paid out. I was able to do exactly what I designed the deck to do, which is thread the needle on making Rector happen. I think I like Thoughtseize a lot in this matchup, probably more than Force of Will, actually. And Surgicals don't matter. Hydroblast doesn't matter. Rest Down is effective against True Name and 
Snapcaster and Stoneforge Mystic. But so is putting Ugin the Spirit Dragon into play. Maybe it's... No, I, I don't know. I don't think it's Prismatic Ending. I'm thinking that like maybe because I have this combo top end, having all my forces in should just be a thing that I do. We saw some spooky planeswalkers, I guess. Narset and Teferi, that Prismatic Ending answers. And they're a Stoneforge deck, but I can think I can go one lower on Plow. And Spell Pierce is good against Planeswalkers, too. One less Plow, one less Force. This is how I'm doing it. Island Ponder Keep, right? No Telepathy. That's disappointing. Okay, drew a land. That's good stuff. Fetching Underground Sea here to get a Ponder going. I have to respect the possibility of Back to Basics. We saw Basic Mountain in their deck, which is not a card that decks play if they're not going to cast Back to Basics. Uh, this actually sucks. I don't want Force of Will enough to draw an extra land. <laughs> All right, Ugin's even worse. We're going to need a Brainstorm to mix this up. In-step Brainstorm from the opponent. That's aggressive, so they're probably... They probably have Stoneforge and they're looking for land number two or something to try to pressure me somehow. This planes with no land is scary. Or no other play. There are two basic lands in my deck, and Luda Delta gives me access to one of them. If I just chill for a turn, I can Prismatic Ending a Back to Basics here. Oh, and they missed a land drop. That's what that Brainstorm was about, and it did not do what they wanted it to. I love that for me. Uh, things I also love for me is not getting Brainstorm locked against uh, Spell Pierce. So I'm going to play out my Scrub Land and pass rather than Brainstorm here. This is the other Brainstorm card. And I think I just want to let them go to cleanup and continue drawing cards when I'm hitting land drops and they're not. Pyroblast in the graveyard. Yeah, that one doesn't look good. Okay. Don't really want to play Caracas, but if they spell Pierce, right, it's fine. If they spell Pierce, it eats my fetch, but it doesn't eat my brainstorm. Cool. Ugin's back in the deck. Caracas is back in the deck. I now have access to both my basic lands, and we can take a little look-see at their hand. What did we keep this one lander on the strength of? Spell Pierce is there. Back to basics is there. All those reads were correct. Two, or that's not two Jaces. It's Narset and Jace. I can Force of Will now. Uh, I think I just want to take this back to basics. Not a card I'm interested in dealing with. I can beat a true name. I can win a counter war currently. Yeah, I'll take the back to basics. And I'm not going to just float this ponder into their spell pierce when they're, they've been moving to discard. Brainstorm. Okay. I'm not here to Force of Will brainstorms, though. If I had Spell Pierce or a Fluster or something, some one for one counter spell, I would deploy it here. But I'm not losing my ponder over it. So they found a land. I'm going to fetch Basic Island in the end step. Get that Ugin back in my deck. Ponder here. Oh, hell yeah. I'll take this Spell Pierce. I don't really want any of the other cards that I saw there, but Spell Pierce is pretty cool. I could also shove Arena Rector into play right now and then force a Jace next turn. Yeah, I'm kind of into that, actually. They didn't show me Swords to Plowshares, so I'll put this big scary thing on the stack and see what they want to say about it. Okay, she's in there. And they didn't shuffle after the Brainstorm. After going to discard two turns ago, they now like every card they saw off of a Brainstorm. Do I care about Narset? No. I can Prismatic Ending that and back it up with Spell Pierce without spending my Force of Will. Just reveal Jace off of Narset. I don't know if that's the second one or if it got put in the deck earlier. Multiple Force of Wills. How about this? Attack Narset for one. And I could play another Rector here and just hold up Spell Pierce and Force and add to my squad. I'm actually into that. This was not the plan going into the turn, but it's becoming the plan now that I have another blue card. It could be reckless not to just clear the Narset when I have the chance, but also 
I can attack Narsa next turn. Please slam Jace. Looks like they're going to try to daze undoing with Spell Pierce back up, but I also have Spell Pierce back up. They force the daze undoing. Let's see if they also found a Force of Will in the mix here. They did not. And now they might as well minus their Narset for a card because it's dying anyway to my overwhelming attack force. Now I'm a little worried about Jace. Got to draw a Cabal Therapy. Blooded Strand. Okay. Uh, how about another Rector? We see Sword Supply Shares now. We know they have Jace in hand. I'm just trying to overwhelm their answers so that there's always some creature that they're not allowed to kill in play. And now if they draw the land, slam Jace, bounce a Rector, the other two can kill Jace. This is a weird game, but it's, it's working. There's the plow. Yeah, they should just slam Jace here. I've made it pretty clear I can't answer it. Yep, there's that. Now I'm in a little bit of trouble, but just drawing a Cabal Therapy off the top gets it done. Brainstorm, find me a therapy. Let's go. Hook it up. Meddling Mage, okay. Uh, I can still ponder first. Shuffle away the cards that I know don't help. And I'm going to prioritize black here. Is that all the cards I want to cast this turn are black? Ponder. Three lands. Oh, we got a shuffle here. Shuffle into Staff the Storyteller. That one's not bad. Could still find a Cabal Therapy right now. Draw for Staff. And it's a Tundra. Okay. I'm going to attack. Jace the Mind Sculptor for two. And then I meddling mage on prismatic ending. Is that the, the line here? Okay, creatures are in play. I'm naming prismatic ending because that kills the meddling mage and kills the staff of the storyteller, and I'm reasonably confident they have one. Brew name, I can just send my rectors into, and they're functionally unblockable because then Ugin shows up if they try to mess with it. Brainstorming with Jace. Okay. And they can't supreme verdict. They can't challenge me in combat there's narset if this is the stock list there's only one day's undoing in it another plow hurts they're almost through my rectors another one bites the dust ponder with just basic mountain left i don't expect this to produce anything i care about and i can currently kill both of their planeswalkers in combat I believe they already made their land drop this turn did not shuffle I guess they could Pyroblast Meddling Mage. That's possible. Prismatic Ending. I drew a one of. Attack Jace. Attack Narset. Attack Narset. Yeah, I attacked a copy of a card that I play very few copies of that I currently can't cast because of my own Meddling Mage. Can we get this board empty? Oh, yeah. See you later, Planeswalkers. They have seven mana now. They could slam Cauldra. That still can't block Arena Rector. I cannot interact with this card. Call draw. I mean, that can't attack or block Arena Rector. Uh, the second Jace. That's my nightmare. Cabal Therapy still does it. Just, just saying. At some point, it could happen. I can also cast Kaya if I draw. We are at that phase of the game. Oh, they're fate sealing me. That's smart. That is a mode of this card that works. Luna Delta. All right, I'll play that. And then I'm going to attack Jace with Spirit Token and Meddling Mage. Don't think I send the Rector. I want that on blocking or minusing Jace duty. I do feel this game slipping away, though. Okay, Stoneforge is being activated. I mean, Jace can minus on Rector, and then blocking's not a problem. Oh, it's Batter Skull. Weird. Build main phase Batter Skull. That is allowed. Her name Nemesis. Yep, we know about that one. Ace is fate sealing me. I have a fetch land. I can mix it up here. Get a new card. And then there's a little bit of a level system here, but I'm behind, so I can't spend a turn playing chicken with them. See if they uh, left a good card on top. Bonder, show me the money. Come on, Cabal Therapy. No, they have a Pyroblast. Stop. Okay, tilt. Uh, now I'm in a ton of trouble because True Name Nemesis can pick up 
the batter skull. Yeah, they have to mess up really bad here for them to actually lose this game. Like, they can bounce Rector and just serve with Cauldra. They could take their time equipping True Name with various objects. Went that, that way. Jace fell out of favor in Legacy for a very long time because it's so soft to Daze and Pyroblast. But, you know, if your opponent happens to not have Pyroblast in their deck, like me currently, it's, it's a tough sell. Very time Reveler. Huge beating. But they bounce my token. Rector's still in play. Does that mean they have a Swords to Plowshares now? Or what does that mean? Or they don't care about Rector? They're brainstorming with Jace. They're really going for it here. Trying to make something happen this turn. I probably would have bounced Rector with at least one of these Planeswalkers and just put my opponent on a one-turn clock. And I don't know what's in their hand. They might just cast Swords to Plowshares here and none of it matters. Okay. It looks like I'm getting another turn to draw Cabal Therapy with. Another Stoneforge, probably searching up this cauldron again that they've brainstormed away since the last time I saw it. Yep. And good chance this Prismatic Ending's not in their hand either. Come on, Cabal Therapy! Shit. Okay, we're dead. Yeah, I mean, we saw fully half of our deck, like 30 cards are left in my deck right now, plus whatever I brainstormed and pondered away. So saw more than half my deck that game without seeing a single Cabal Therapy. That can happen. Uh, I think Force of Will should probably be in in a higher quantity. And do I want Force of Negation as well? Now that I know they're on this multi-Jace party pack. Meddling Mage is actually kind of mid here. And I'll go down another Swords to Plowshares and just try it like this. More counter spells. Be a combo deck on the play. Okay. Um... A one lander with telepathy and cabal therapy and Ugin. Ugh. If the top card of my deck is a land, I'm in great shape. Even with the Ugin in my hand, I don't care. But if it's anything else, I'm in trouble. I'm going to mulligan this. Here we go. Rewarded for our patience. Keep and send swords to plowshares to the bottom or mentor. That's actually really close. Uh, I guess it could be a land. I have two lands to play on uh, that draws card with Staff of the Storyteller. Okay. Um, I'll put Scrubland to the bottom. No, Scrubland makes white. If I fetch Basic Island to hedge against back to basics, then I have all my colors and a basic, so I should send Underground Sea to the bottom. Okay. It's done. And I think I want a Cabal Therapy. Force of Will. I could also go ponder or brainstorm at this early stage of the game, but I really want this stuff the storyteller to resolve. So I'm gonna go Force of Will. They have True Name. All right, a bunch of cards that are not Force of Will. I was never gonna name any of the cards that they revealed, so I don't feel too bad for missing. That's my basic island here. Really don't want to fetch basic island. But I also don't want to lose two back to basics. Might not be able to get both out of that exchange. All right, I'm getting the island now. And then Staff of the Storyteller, which I'm going to use to flashback Cabal Therapy. Probably taking Prismatic Ending. I hope they drew a second one since I saw their hand last. Two Pyroblasts. Good to know. Okay, so they're likely to Pyroblast my Ponder if I were to cast it. The best thing I can do is draw a land and just shove Monastery Mentor onto this board that can't handle it. There's the basic mountain land for Mentor. Oh yeah. Okay, Monastery Mentor, go. Can't Pyroblast that one. Spicy one of in the deck. Get paid. Volcanic Island. This could play True Name Nemesis. Okay, that's fine. Now the shields are down on the Ponder, which is what I was playing towards, and they didn't Narset, which means my staff and my Ponder can work. Meddling Mage on Pyroblast, maybe? Okay, I'll start with a Ponder. I want to make sure this Mentor does something on the way through. And now we're in full Staff of the Storyteller in Sano mode. Ugh, I don't... I do want to land, but not this land. I'm going to shuffle this. I would have kept a white source there. And shuffled up the same land anyway. 
I can meddling mage naming Narset. They would have to spend some time pyroblasting it. I could also just draw a card. See if I find the white source. I'll do that. Got there. Too easy. And I'll put a Tundra into play. And then meddling mage. And I don't want them to cast Narset. But they're going to cast Narset anyway. So if I name Pyroblast, they resolve Narset. And then they can't necessarily answer follow-up things. If I name Narset, they spend a Pyroblast and then play Narset anyway. And it costs them a mana. I'll make that cost them a mana. Uh, Narset, Harder of Veils. I'll do that one. There's the Vista. Play number four. There's a Pyroblast. I am surprised. Narset. So my best draw is probably like Staff of the Storyteller or Prismatic Ending. Something that can trigger Mentor without missing a draw into the Narset. Prismatic Ending, just removing Narset would be great. How do we do? Uh, another Swords to Plowshares. We did bad, is the answer. So they can. Swords of Plowshares Mentor next turn. I could attack Narset, plow both of my own, plow Mentor twice, like plow, hold priority, plow. I make two monks on the way out and I do clear Narset. I don't know if that's even remotely a viable thing that I should be thinking about. Actually sounds kind of important. It sucks that I don't have a third white to immediately draw a card with staff. Okay, I think I'm just going to pass on that and hold up Staff of the Storyteller. They have shown me Swords of Plowshares targets in their deck. At least a few of them. Narset Activation shows me Jace. Extra land shows me Jace plus Swords of Plowshares. Or, uh, these lands don't protect Jace with Pyroblast. Okay, it did draw Force of Will. If I plow my own mentor, it gives me another creature and charges staff of the storyteller, and they still get to resolve Jace here. And it all sucks, but I am going to do this thing that has a chance to do something. A okay, second monk is accessible now, and they can shove Jace and bounce one of the monks, but I've charged my staff. Big oof. And they did bounce a monk. There's not going to be an attack here. That's so close to being good. Uh, I'm going to save that. It's not good yet. And I'm holding up Force of Will right now. I'm going to save this therapy for the turn where I actually have a Rector in my hand. I have the five mana to poke and immediately refire. As we've discussed, Ugin is the type of thing that can keep up with a Jace. Green R set. Okay. And I can't win this counter war, so I'm going to let it happen. R set activation. There's Days Undoing. I hope they don't have a land. They'll probably brainstorm with Jace to try to find the land and protect this with Pyroblast. Oh, they bounced my Monk. Okay. So if they go for Undoing here without a land drop, I do have Force, which I did not have last turn, or was not able to use last turn, and they know it. Absolutely. Bam. That means I don't get to staff this turn, but it also means I'm not just friggin' dead. And they're really not interested in attacking with this true name nemesis. I don't understand. Thoughtseize, great. Let's have a look. What's left over there? We know about Pyroblast. And Force of Will. All right, I'll take your Force of Will. Sit you on this Pyroblast. Okay, that was a good draw. I have the plow for it. I'm not super worried about this one right now. Narset activation. Very worried about back to basics. Please don't have that. Another force and a brainstorm. I'm very jealous of what my opponent's doing. This deck is awesome. And they played a land, so they are showing force of will now. I got two looks at what's her face here? Rector. And a turn draw card. And swords to plowshares this stone forge mystic. See if they want to tap out for force of will on their own turn about this. They do not. Rector. Yeah. Ball therapy. Name Force of Will. Force of Will. Put that in the graveyard. Your Ponder and Pyroblast will not save you here. 
We did it. Now I just have to actually win the game in four minutes. Therapy U, discarding Rec or sacking Rector. Get Ugin. Therapy the Ponder out of their hand. And we hit a Ponder. What a surprise. Then minus four Ugin. Bang. I lose my staff, but they lose everything. Go. Now I just have to win this game with Ugin in three and a half minutes. Oh god. Oh, they, they were floating Cauldron on top. Ugin's dead. Oh no. Okay. Never mind. We're back in this. Or they're back in this. This game is going to continue. Okay. Ugin's dead. That was a sick play. Ponder first. I'm going to shuffle. And another Rector. Okay. Uh, they will not be able to attack effectively here. Uh, they don't know what my other Planeswalker is. They might not know if I even have one, but Rector Go is my line. Oh no, you don't have Plow on top too. Stop. Stop tapping mana. Okay. Stoneforge Mystic's fine. Batter Skull. Please attack, please attack, please attack. Bummer. Wall Therapy. Okay, it's two Brainstorms. They're going to Pyroblast one of them, then I'll cast the other. But they didn't Pyroblast it. Fascinating. Uh... Land goes back, Brainstorm goes back, Prismatic Ending, Germ, that out please, that of the Storyteller, and pass the turn. Yeah, I'm worried about the clock now. I think even if I get Kaya, I don't know if I can activate her enough times to kill my opponent in two minutes. Just frantically F6ing. Casting Batter Skull. That's allowed. So I draw this Brainstorm, I draw with Staff of the Storyteller, I believe this is a new card, oh no, this is the Pluto Delta, I did know about that. Brainstorm, are you ready to Pyroblast yet? Pyroblast, and I will just pass the turn. Probably could have poked for one there, but I might need that blocker. Whipping Cauldra. And we have an attack. I'm gonna get to Kaya here, which charges my Staff of the Storyteller. Rector's dead. The exile trigger doesn't matter. There's Kaya. She has hexproof. Exile target creature or enchantment. Make a 1 1 copy of it. Hell yeah. Germ counts as a creature or enchantment. Under the rules of Magic the Gathering. Get rid of the germ. Just going to charge the staff. Going to draw me a card. Then I'm going to play Brainstorm. Did not find the white removal I was looking for. Yeah, I think they're going to be able to kill Kaya now. Just equip Cauldra. And then I'm in trouble. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm ahead on clock. Can I win this game the unsporting way? If they spend time attacking Kaya, which I guess they have to. Man. Tough crowd out here. And I can't save Kaya even with a double block. This thing does have trample. Disappointed. Okay, they've officially killed all my planeswalkers. And now I'm going to fetch a Tundra. I got to try to dig up a white removal spell. That's not it. If they equip, they have 10 power to my two blockers. Going to have to block with everything here. Oh, wait, I'm still dead. This is Xaxes. Why did I think this would work? Okay, GG. Okay, that was pretty cool. I mean, them floating the Cauldra on top and then hard casting it to clear Ugin, that was sweet. And then Kaya not quite getting the game done. Yeah, once they're just equipping Cauldra. I also saw a lot of cards that turn and didn't find an answer for Stoneforge, which I did board out a few, so can't be mad. That was a great game. On to the next one. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. On the draw in round two, and Thoughtseize is not telepathy, but it does see my opponent's hand. And then I have a way to look at my opponent's hand and three things that care about that. 
Uh oh, unless I get turn one chalice, then I have nothing. Emery sucks too. And there's the chalice in the graveyard. All right, well, we're dead. <laughs> Gonna have to thought seize my opponent. Okay, uh, this force of will showed up a little late. Would have loved to force this Emery. Kappa and your own force. And I'll take the Kappa. Does that matter? Yeah, I'll take Kappa, I guess. They cannot actually cast this Chalice. Oh, yeah. There's Ancient Tomb in there. What am I even saying? Yes, they can. Ancient Tomb. If they Chalice here, I'm just going to have to accept my punishment for my deck that contains two copies of Telepathy instead of the other two copies of Prismatic Ending that I should have in my deck. Yeah, they are very obviously just casting Chalice of the Void, as one does. Disappointing. I'm supposed to be the prison deck. Thought cast. All right, yeah, just, you know, drawing the best possible card after a thought sees is reasonable. Eh. Okay, um, I'm not going to keep playing this game. I don't want them to know anything else about my deck. Yeah, I do have Serenities and Dress Downs in my sideboard for this matchup. Serenity, Dress Down, all good stuff. The Planeswalker stuff matters. Cabal Therapy, and it's still a sack outlet. Thoughtsy is less important. Plow is good against Emery and nothing else, so I'll go down one plow. I want to be able to combo finish. Spell Pierce does battle Chalice effectively. Prismatic Ending, very important. If I had more copies of that in my deck, maybe we wouldn't have conceded game one. I want to cut the telepathy so bad, but I'm going to stay true to the vision here. I think it's going to be another plow and a meddling mage. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I'll keep this one. Island Ponder. Tap the Storyteller is a good one. Opponent's on six. I'm casting Ponder. There's my telepathy. Hell yeah. Uh, I will put telepathy in my hand because I am pretty stoked to pitch it to Force of Will. Ancient Tomb. Lotus Petal. I have a plow on top if they just play Emery here. This looks like a chalice. I send a Force of Will at it because that card is one that I cannot beat. Pitching Telepathy. Don't look in my Exile Pile opponent. There's nothing to see there. I do like the Brainstorm on top of my deck, provided they don't play a second Chalice. And we're in there on Staff. They've gotten Urza Saga. That's a good one. And a Psy. How many idiots are joining the Psy? One idiot. Two idiots, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Three idiots, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, their whole hand was zeros. It's a pretty good turn, too. I need to find a Serenity, which was always my plan for the matchup. I'm gonna draw for Staff first. This gives me more cards in hand to brainstorm with, more stuff to move around. Brainstorm. There's the Serenity. We're in business. Put back land, land. I'll put back land, land, play flooded strand, and I'm gonna plow sigh while the getting's good here. I'm gonna fetch my scrub land just to round out my colors, make sure I can do what I need to do. Plow the sigh. They can draw a card on the way out if they want to lose some thoppies. Probably worth doing. They were free anyway. That is, in fact, what happened. And I'll pass the turn with my spirit up to block. And my entire game plan right now is the Serenity with Force of Will backup. Didn't fling their baubles at me, so they're playing to a Kappa or various affinity spells, thought-related objects. Thought Monitor is the thought-related object we found. Currently can't activate this Saga. Yep, Shadow Spear, whatever. Okay, <laughs> hell yeah, telepathy. Always showing up when I need you. All right, here's Serenity. This will kill my staff of the Storyteller. It will kill all of their permanents except for Ancient Tomb. Oh, wow, they spent a force on it. And I get to pitch a second Telepathy. All right, Telepathy was a welcome draw there. Their force pitched another force. They now know there are two Telepathies in my deck, at least, getting pitched to these Force of Wills. Glasses of Versa doesn't do that. We got a Sheesh, that card is brutal in the chat. Yes. That is why I chose to register it. Unless they were talking about telepathy, in which case, 
Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> Better believe it. Okay, obviously not tutoring or not making a construct here. I might get either small bomb and pick up thought monitor. Like try to invest in the next wave at this point. I don't know what you actually do here. Because anything you get just dies if you don't use it. Yeah, bobble for just a redraw. Makes sense as well. Emery, disappointing. That's a really good follow-up to my all-in serenity here. And they get to attack for three life link. Oh, they're splitting it over there. Okay. Whatever. I'm not blocking anyway, so make it happen. Your creatures are dying, mine are not. So I'm going to keep my spirit around. Now I, gotta f I have a one-turn window. I get to look at four cards to try to answer this Emery, and they can cash in up to three baubles if they want them. They have seen the top of my deck and the card in my hand. And I guess they have to cash in the baubles because they're about to die. See you later. All the cards. And you dress down. I guess I brainstorm leaving up Scrubland Underground Sea for the most options here. Caracas isn't out. These are not outs. Put those away. I'm gonna attack with my spirit, fetch, and then dress down in the end step, which freezes Emery for a turn. That's a turn that tells the boy can't come into play. And I'll get a tundra here. And cast dress down, leaving up white just in case I spike a plow, which I did board out some number of. Uh, my opponent just said in the chat, oh, it kills itself, talking about Serenity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what if it just stayed in play and was just like every upkeep, just boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, that's not what that does. Okay, uh, they have had a Force of Negation for my Dress Down, decided that casting Chalice of the Void out of their graveyard is worth two cards. Reasonable. They are ahead right now, kind of by a lot. Oh, they're targeting Bobble, though. They're trying to rebuild. They're not trying to lock me out anymore. Or they drew a Chalice in their hand and don't need to go through the graveyard. Yep, sure. <laughs> that works, too. Okay, they're drawing two cards a turn. Prismatic Ending and Caracas are big hits here. Okay, there's a Dress Down. I will use it. And the, the end step thing that I tried to do last turn, but they countered. My patience on keeping the Spirit in play now has me... Poking for meaningful damage when two thirds of their mana comes from Ancient Tomb. It's pretty good. Ponder, a card that is not able to be cast. Pretty bad. All right, Urza Saga off the top. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And yeah, they didn't even bobble. Didn't even want the extra draw step in this tight situation. They're like, no, I believe. And Urza Saga appeared off the top of the deck, rewarding their, their beliefs. Rector. All right. Damn near killed her. Get in there. Now Cabal Therapy gets me back in this game. Cabal Therapy is countered, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to resolve. It just needs to sacrifice my creature. The Shadow Spear is already gone, and they can't replay it under their own Chalice with Emery. So they're going to have to win this game with damage without killing an Arena Rector. And if these decks usually play some amount of graveyard hate it'll just determine if they still have it in if they have soul guide lantern they can tutor up that would let them attack with impunity thought monitor is a creature with flying that one works too they gave up on versus saga for that meddling mage interesting okay i'm gonna attack with both of my creatures because they tap their saga i'm just gonna push damage Oh shit, the spirit shouldn't have attacked. What am I even doing? This creature is flying. Stop it. Dumbass. Okay. Uh, they have Urza and Mishra Bobbles in the graveyard. What card am I worried about now? Uh, Thought Monitor. Yeah, I'm going to name Thought Monitor because there is one in the graveyard and if they just draw a million cards and dig out of this, I'm in trouble. Yeah, attacking with that spirit was just completely brain dead. In my head, I was just going, yeah, Arena Rector is unblockable, but the other one's not. Oh, it looks like they're not even making constructs. It's so wild. This Aether Spellbomb can bounce Meddling Mage and they can play another Thought Monitor. Or they're just casting a Kappa Cannon here. That also does what it needs to. Oh, they're playing Psy first, then Kappa Cannon here, because you can just do both. 
did go to four off that attack. Arena Rector, unfortunately, does not have four power. Yeah, I'm very, very dead here. I don't think I even have... Like, they have so many stats. Seven, eight, nine. They can make it ten. I guess if I draw Serenity right now, and they don't have a second artifact, but no, the Thoppers can just attack. Yeah, I, I don't have anything here except Wall Therapy. That's my only out. You draw a card, I draw a card. Wall Therapy, shit. All right, we're dead. This is an important deck building lesson. When you cut important format staples like Prismatic Ending from your deck in favor of silly little things you want to try, like telepathy, your deck gets markedly worse in important ways, such as False the Void is now GG, which we saw two games in a row. On to the next round. Command Tower Software by Eminence Gaming is perfect for hosting TCG events. It features easy-to-create event registration for 1v1 and 4-player Swiss structure tournaments. Event management has never been so simple, and it's web-based, so there's no download required. Get access for just $5 at eminence.events. subscribe I'm on the play with a distressing no telepathy hand, but I do have Island Ponder. I'm in. And I can play this game on base glands that I have, just in case. Ponderino. Oh, there's the telepathy. <laughs> I was kidding, I don't actually want that. Um, okay, so there's two staff of the storytellers here. Those cards are very good. And I can find telepathy on turn three if I need it. Or I could take it now. Okay, so I'm keeping this ponder. It's got something resembling a plan. Let's see what my opponent's up to. They appear to be a 63 card deck. There are 55 cards in their deck and 8 cards in their hand right now. So we're merfolk. Okay. Just many card merfolk. And they have this uh, containment priest buddy. Mist Caller, a card that I only recently learned existed, even though it came out in M19, which was several years ago. One mana, one one, you can sack it if a non token creature entered the battlefield this turn and it wasn't cast, exile it. That's pretty good. I'm gonna start with my staff of the storyteller and get that happening. This is worth a force of will pitching Master of the Pearl Trident. Okay. I accept that exchange. Medallion Hex Catcher. Okay. All right, uh, I'm going to play Telepathy first, and then I can see their hand and know what I need to Meddling Mage. So this is actually an important Telepathy. Uh, sucks that this Wasteland is here, but I guess I'm losing my land regardless. So Fetch and Meddling Mage, Master of the Pearl Trident. This has to be some blue land. I want to keep my Black Sources in the deck for later. Okay, Tundra. Master of the Pearl Trident cannot be cast. And I'll pass the turn. Bet you wish you sacked a bunch of creatures down to my telepathy now. Oh, no. Or you could draw your name nemesis and cast it uncounterably. That's pretty good. That card's been very popular this league. Kind of fell off for a long time in Legacy, but here it is. Do I want to trade with this card? Oh, they don't want to offer the trade? That would be even better. Nope. Yeah, you definitely want to offer the trade. Master is so much better than this thing. Okay. I'm going to take the two. And... Somatic ending is relevant someday. Good stuff with the storyteller in. I'm going to need to Ugin to win this game, which has been a, a theme. I could still hit a land drop here, so I'll draw my card. Force of Will. Cards that are blank in this matchup include. Oh, they draw a second Master of the Pearl Trident. Got him. Still going to die to Tree Name Nemesis, but moral victory. Wasteland's real good. I'll soak up the damage from Mistcaller with Spirit. My life total is starting to become pretty dire. Need to draw lands, please. Prismatic ending, Shiat. Uh, I'm going to brainstorm looking for lands and miss on them and lose the game as a result. Okay. Uh, we did come up with Cabal Therapy Rector, but this is not it. I will now concede the game. Uh, so... I guess if I ending Mist Caller, that'll save some life. Uh, I guess I don't have to concede yet, but I hate this. Meddling Mage has to stay back to block Hexcatcher. Brainstorm in your Merfolk deck? This is sick. I didn't approve this. Another Mist Caller. 
Put back the two masters. Another wasteland ready. Okay, I'm ready to concede to wasteland. I was ready to concede anyway. And just knowing that I'm never going to get up to Rector. No thanks. A Plague Engineer. Easy. Rest down. Easy. Force of Will. Pretty bad. This one's in. And I don't think it's getting much better than this. I guess I could bring in Thoughtseize. Which is a really bad top deck, but Force of Will frequently dead in this matchup anyway. And I'm actually out of space, so just one thought sees. It's not actually good, it's just something that I am doing. I will keep this hand and hope that they go all in on an Aether Vial on turn one. They land on the Void. What did I do that indicated that I care about that? It's a genuine question. Didn't see the Rector. I didn't play a Cabal Therapy. Okay, uh, I am going to counter this Brainstorm. I don't know what's going on over there right now. But whatever it is, stop it. Wish I could Meddling Mage Wasteland. That would be nice. I'm going to invest in Staff of the Storyteller. That can redraw something. Silver Bill Adept Revealing Lord of Atlantis. Did someone say revealing? <laughs> About Meddling Mage on Lord of Atlantis. Sick. Lock that one down. And I guess I'll ponder while the getting's good. Telepathy and a bunch of lands. No thanks. Shuffle this. How about some of those sorts of plowshares that I'm pretty sure I included in my deck when I registered it? Rename this. I can blow out with dress down. Love drawing lands. I'm going to meddling mage. Master of the Pearl Trident. Or do I care about that? I don't. Dalian Hexcatcher is the one I care about. I don't want any surprises interacting with me in ways I don't want to be interacted with. The problem with dressing down True Name is that it unlocks the meddling mages for a turn. And they can drop this Lord of Atlantis, which is a card that I struggle to defeat. But I guess we're going to find out here. The True Name is on board doing a similar scary thing. And maybe they just won't realize that they can cast their spell this turn. Lock. Put it away. Pass the turn, please. Yeah, they just went right through main phase. Didn't cast their lord. Good shit. Gonna draw with staff. And found a fetch land. Perfect to go with this brainstorm. And this rector not helping because of Leyline of the Void, which I am baffled by. Do get to charge both staffs, though. Cool. And I found a sword supply of shares. I'm not upset about the position. I am, remain confused about the ley line of the void. Now I have to actually figure out how I'm going to win a game where I can't tutor a planeswalker. I guess it's just get seven or eight lands and play and cast them. Don't believe I have a single out to this ley line of the void. Maybe in the 75. Uh, Serenity's in the 75, but yeah, in the main. Uh, Kaya can destroy enchantments. Okay, if I cast Kaya, I can then tutor for Ugin. We end up that late in the game somehow. And this Lord of Atlantis could start arriving through either Vial in the near future. I think I have one white source left. Yeah, okay, perfect. Exactly the right amount to draw a card here. Baracus. Another plow, draw a card. Another staff, let's go. Charge it up, Ancestral Recall. Draw a card, leaving a black. Give myself a chance to find a discard spell. Ponder. While therapy is, in fact, a discard spell. Ponder underneath it. While therapy, I'll name Lord of Atlantis. Just get ahead of it here. I know it's there, so let's deal with it. Maybe you have three of them. Oh my god! Another Twitter screenshot. <laughs> Blammo. Uh, they did, in fact, have three Lord of Atlantises in their hand. I think it's safe to attack with the Meddling Mage on Lord of Atlantis now. <laughs> There's none left. Cool. Okay, your turn. Yeah, they just played a land past the turn. Opponent is Hellbent, and I'm going to start drawing lots of cards and hopefully win the game. There's Telepathy. We knew that was there. Another Ponder. Always happy to see those. Kind of in the market for Kaya at this point. 
Brainstorm, Meddling Mage, okay. I'm going to take the Meddling Mage and turn off True Name Nemesis. And they could just vial it in, but also, whatever. If we get a game three, I probably should have Containment Priest in the deck. Cover Vile. And I am not going to put this till up at the end of play. I'm going to shuffle it away with the Brainstorm that I'm drawing next turn. And they packed it up. Okay. Leyline of the Void. All right. I mean, I'm not bringing in Serenity to deal with that. So it is what it is. If they have that card in their opening hand, they will enjoy the fruits of it for the entire game. And I could shave a Rector because they have Leyline in. Or I could just bet that it's not going to be in their opening hand. All right, fine. I'll hedge up a little bit. Containment Priest in, Arena Rector out. Okay, we got the nuts here, unless they lay line me. And then it's just the mids, the fines. I'm going to keep. They did not lay line me. Cool. Wasteland. This must be a vile hand. Yep. Oh, baby. I think I want to fetch. Well, if I fetch Island, it doesn't matter. I want to remove vile. Yeah, I think I'm just going to fetch Tundra, take their vial, let them waste me, is the, the line here, and hope they're all in on this vial. If they have force here, I'm in trouble, because then they get to waste me and continue to develop. And I'm trying to put them in a position where they can't do both. Bummer. Force pitching, true name. Okay, let's hope this uh, holds up. Glad to see true name go, though. Island, wasteland, yep, yep. Oh, sick. Well... You don't always get a second chance at life, but I will take my second copy of this card I play two copies of. They're going to get me with actual Curse Catcher. Oh, second force pitching Lord of Atlantis. Okay. Uh, just don't have a second Wasteland, and I'm actually feeling okay with all these exchanges. File probably Adept to try to do some hit their land drop. Lord of Atlantis right now, before I can freeze it out, I guess. Get one card in their hand. I'm going to know what it is, and then decide if I care about it. Telepathy. I do care about it. Master of the Pearl Trident. Okay, we get to see their hand for the rest of the game. And now it's just a race to four mana and get Ugin into play before they wasteland me out. It draws Leyline of the Void. Okay, the perfect punish. Yes. Put that card in your deck and draw it on turn four when you need action. That's what I want out of all of my Magic the Gathering opponents. Not even going to therapy it. I don't care. All right, Ponder, just, just show me three lands off this Ponder. That's what I want. Okay, uh, two lands and a Shuffle and a Plague Engineer. That's pretty good. I'm going to take the land, see what they do this turn, but I'll probably just Shuffle because any land off the top gets it done. And I'm not even sure Plague Engineer stabilizes against their medium lines. Oh god, days. Okay. Uh, that is worth therapying, and I am going to shuffle away Plague Engineer. i fetch an Underground C. And then another therapy. Okay. Wall therapy. Take your days. Okay, now I just need a land before they have a Wasteland. Boomerang. Sweet Googa Mooga. That can actually beat Ugin. <laughs> Uh, luckily the land flashback will strip the boomerang. Alright, deck, give me a land. Please don't die to boomerang. Merfolk in the year 2023. Yeah, we did it. Okay, I'm gonna summon Ugin. And I'm gonna take the boomerang. Should be good to go here. Get Ugin, the spirit dragon. Name boomerang with cabal therapy. Not something I thought I would say in this league today and if i did think i was going to say it i wouldn't think it would be this important then plus on master or lord they both do the same thing but plusing makes my ugin bigger whereas minusing makes it smaller all right two copies of the line of the void rewarded for our our faith here oh sick arena rector and i'm gonna zap it with ugin i guess i can cabal therapy to rub it in so, yeah, that also deals three damage. Okay. Yes, get Kaya. I'm going to name Abandon Hope. Or is that still the funniest one? You are already dead. Let's go. 
Oh no, they're a brainstorm deck. They're a brainstorm deck. I'll just do the correct thing. Playland of the Voids. Opponent is now Hellbent. Three damage to your face. And three damage to your face. And I gain three. I don't even want to let them scry by drawing two cards. I can't imagine I care. I'm trying to imagine what card they could possibly have in the history of Magic the Gathering that would win them this game. And it's not Vidalian Hexcatcher into my onboard two ways to remove it. It's certainly not that. Okay. Ugin's minus is gain seven, draw seven, put up to seven permanents from your hand onto the battlefield. That's not even better than just lightning bolting my opponent twice. They're dead in two hits here. Bang, bang. And swords to plowshares, your thing right now before I'm concerned about it. Oh, that does give them an extra turn. Maybe I'm supposed to ignore that. I'm just throwing cards around at this point, having the time of my life with these two big planeswalkers in play. Lord of Atlantis, that can come into play. I'll ignore this one. Three to my opponent, three to my opponent. They could be dead right now, and I said they're not. I do feel a little bit bad about that. Okay, you're up. I can't even make a joke about miracling the Time Walk Miracle, because that wouldn't even get them out of it, and they can't cast it. Brainstorm, I'm rewarded for taking the Leyland. Back in Kaya, sure. She is heartbroken from going from 12 loyalty to 10. I'll let Kaya have the win here. Bang! Okay, that was pretty awesome. The bonus deck was wild, and I'm glad we navigated it. On the board, let's go. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the play for round four. I'm going to keep my hand, and we're going to test how much information I can glean about an opponent's deck from their opening land drop. No thought seizes, no telepathies. Just down and dirty meddling mage. I hope they, like, turn one personal tutor for Doomsday. <laughs> Just put me in easy mode. Okay, this deck is not going to personal tutor in it. Delver of Secrets, okay. What am I worried about from a deck that goes Tropical Island Delver of Secrets? I'm going to fetch my basics. Plains Island. Uh, do I just name, like, Brainstorm or something boring like that? Force of Will? I'm going to name Brainstorm, if it even resolves. Okay, got dazed. That works out for me. I'll take the old Duress slash Stone Rain out of a blind meddling mage. This hand in the market now for a Cabal Therapy. Delver didn't flip. Okay, I'm probably naming Lightning Bolt now. Now that I see their rug, I probably should have assumed their rug anyway. Because Simic isn't really a thing. Oh, now I can just do it all. Okay. Um, Cabal Therapy. I just need to fade Wasteland here. I'm going to name Force of Will. Cabal Therapy named Force of Will. Oh, there is, in fact, a Wasteland in there. And then Meddling Mage named Ponder. I'm more worried about the Ponder than I am the DRC here. And the Cabal Therapy is in the graveyard now, which is where it needs to be. If I'm still alive when I hit land number four, we're cooking. Yeah! Delver Flip revealing Ponder. Shadow Realm. The, the play is pretty easily DRC plus Wasteland here. I don't think we're going to trick them into doing anything other than that. DRC. Wasteland. Okay. I would love to just draw a land. Oh, I can't cast the Ponder that I just drew. Rule Fate. Monastery Mentor get in. And... I think I would trade their two ponders for my their two DRCs to unlock their two ponders all day every day. So yeah, attack here. Attack for three. A deck. How about that land? It's time. You owe me. Yeah. Okay. Um Arena Rector on the stack. Please don't have days or force of will. It in your one unknown card. Yeah, they scooped it up. Let's go. Meddling Mage, a.k.a. Him to Tarak. 
plague engineer i'm going to bring in this is the type of situation where I, I think i want anything i can get that's going to help i don't always bring in plague engineer against delver meddling mage is kind of mid for being honest here so i might need it because my deck is constructed based on this being an interaction spell and not a lock piece like i actually do kind of require some assistance there Force of Will can help punch my Rector through, which is how I'm going to win this game if I'm going to win it. I'm bringing in all this other stuff. Still have my discard. Okay, Meddling Mage is pretty mid here. I'm going to shave a Force of Will. And listen, we're up against Delver in the back half of the league. I'm going to shave one of the Telepathies. I'll leave one in. Can't fault me too much, but one of them's got to go. Okay, the Kaya in my hand I don't love. I am going to keep the hand, though. It's got a Rector. It's got some interaction. It's soft to Wasteland. Okay, uh, I can Cabal Therapy them. Just get a look at what's going on over there. Wish I could name Wasteland. Okay, so I can name... They would have pondered already. I think Brainstorm. B-Storm. Force of Will, Murktide Region, Tarmogoyf. Okay. No Brainstorms over there. Got me with the Tarmogoyf. The We did see green mana in game one, but the Rug Delver community, sometimes they're on just actual like 2011 Rug Delver with Tarmogoyfs and stuff, and then sometimes the green is just a splash for Minsk and Boo in the sideboard. And you don't really know which is which until you see something like Tarmogoyf. And there it is. Sick. Okay, Cabal Therapy, you again. I think I'm taking Murktide Regent. Just not ready for that thing. And I can wade through a Force of Will later, I think. Maybe. Yeah, I'm going to hit Murky Rage. Not a Wasteland, damn it. Card's so good against me. He even gets to take me off blue. The cantrips are dead. I'll float blue, though, in case they run a Lightning Bolt or something. But nope, this Tarmogoyf is going to get to work. My deck is full of plows and endings and stuff and stabs of the storyteller. Let's see if they found a blue card for this force. They did not. That was a great draw. God, I love stab of the storyteller. Holy moly, what a good card. I would bolt the spirit here if I were them because Tarmogoyf's going to be more damage than letting me chump lock. Yep, that is what they did. Tarmogoyf is four. The bolt would have been three. Oh, come on! They haven't even cantrip. They're just like, yeah, the top two cards in my deck are Wasteland. Good luck over there. Prismatic ending. If I find the land and can stabilize against the Goyf, but instead I will simply die to it. Go ahead, waste me. I know you have another one. The land number three, which was not polluted Delta. There's one unknown card in their hand. I guess I can't concede here as much as I would like to. I am still technically drawing live. Brainstorm. Now everything's worse. There's the Delta we knew about, and they're fetching with it. Okay, the second threat is enough to let me concede here. The only hope I had there was removing Tarmogoyf, and they just can't do anything for a long time, and let me dig out. Okay, I don't think I'm changing the composition of my deck. Thoughtseize is better on the play. Oh, Meddling Mage actually is which is really not good here. I am bringing in more Thoughtseize, and I'm just going to play this like a straight-up combo deck. That's my plan. I can basic island ponder with this, so I will keep it. Even though it's not what I like. I do like basic island ponder. Don't misunderstand me, but uh, just show me three lands here. Okay, I'll take two lands and a Thoughtseize. Play Dragon's Rage Channeler, please. Christmas Bobble. Okay. They're not playing Dragon's Rage Channeler. They played that first. Targeted themselves with Mistress Bobble. Why? You can't do anything with that information after you make your land drop. But okay. They don't know about my Thoughtseize. Um, I am actually going to brainstorm here because I am interested in having this land underneath, even if my Thoughtseize ends up getting dazed. Oh, sick. Uh, that's a bunch of good stuff. I'm going to send these Force of Wills away. I think with this Barrage of Discard coming through, I've got another plan. And I'm going to start with Scrubland. What's going on over there? 
two brainstorms and a ponder. I'm going to take one of the brainstorms because that one is both an instant and changes the hand more. If only we had telepathy, we could have shadow realm the opponent right now. Silver didn't flip. Ponder. Ponder did not shuffle, and then Misty Rainforest was played. Okay. They probably set up Delver to flip here. Okay, this is kind of a tightrope act. I would like my discard to stay relevant, but I also need to Prismatic Ending this turn. So do I fetch Underground Sea first, holding up Prismatic Ending? And I think the answer is yes. Underground Sea, Cabal Therapy, you. If they don't Brainstorm in response, I take Brainstorm. If they do, then it messes up the top of their deck that they just set up. There's that. Here's the Brainstorm. And based on what I've seen, I guess it's possible they don't have a single non-land card in their hand. But that means their hand is bad, so I'm okay with that. I think I want to name Murktide Regent on this one. It's a card I'm worried about. Lightning Bolt and a bunch of lands in the hand. Okay, cool. Prismatic Ending, your only threat. And let's hang out. Okay, did they float a Murktide on top? That was the card I was worried about. I can Force of Will it if they did. Ponder's fine. Did not shuffle. Played a Dragon's Rage Channeler. That's going to resolve. And Volcanic Island from hand. All right. They're still holding up Lightning Bolt. Cool. My mana's getting better. And I'm going to kill DRC. And then I'm going to pass the turn and hope that I draw Rector. Delver. I'll still take the Rector. I believe we have perfect information now. They haven't moved cards around. Rector. Shit. Okay. Well, I can cast Force of Will if I need to. I'm not going to Cabal Therapy this Lightning Bolt. I can just cast it. And then I get nothing. Delver flipped revealing Force of Will. Disappointing. That's a card that they can hard cast now. But it's fine because I can Therapy it. I need to find a Rector. Or I'm dead. A removal spell is insane here as well. Rackus is neither of those things. I'm not going to therapy now. I don't need to. But my life total is not exactly on a long clock here. Go to 8. I'm effectively at 5. Next turn, I'm effectively at 2. Yeah, this is one of my last two draw steps. Oh my god. Okay, if they don't bolt me in response, I'm going to name Lightning Bolt. Which could buy me a turn. We're playing 3D chess right now. Um, I think I actually forced this. Yeah, this is worth a whole turn of the game right now. Wow, and they force pitching Murktide on the back. And then their last card is Polluted Delta. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is just Polluted Delta. I'll name Abandon Hope. I'll show them. Uh, if they have a Mystic Sanctuary, I lose right now. Okay. Uh, it's go time. I have to draw a removal spell or a rector to keep playing the game. Staff of the Storyteller is a redraw with a block. My opponent bobbled themselves, and they did have a fetch line to manipulate it. Okay, deck, help me out. Real good card. Good card. That's a good card. Okay. Um, ball therapy, my opponent first. A name, Force of Will. Make sure they can't counter this plow. Armagoyf, all right. Saying there's a chance. Okay, I get another redraw here. I'm not dead yet. The second they find a lightning bolt, I am. Oh no, not that card. That's so many looks at lightning bolt. Here's the delta. Here's the goyf. One mystery card left. Two goyfs, okay. Rector, 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 Rector. Ah, uh, all right. Go out like a boss. Bam. Okay, had a lot of looks at uh, win the game card there, but they kept the steady pressure up, and that's Delver. On to the final round. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop, and be sure to use the code BOSSHANROLL for 10% off when you check out. I'm on the play in round five with another hand that tests my ability to blind name all therapy. But I'm in for it. I think you just named Brainstorm in the Blind and Legacy. Fire it off. You got over there. Brainstorm. They have Fatal Push him to Drog Stifle. Okay. A lot of cards. 
that are not Brainstorm. This looks like Death Shadow or some Stifle Knot deck. Yeah, Stifle's weird. That's not normally in decks. Uh, they were debating whether to leave up Stifle or not, and then just decided to cast Bonder instead. Okay, sure. So what I'm going to do here is fetch while I can, for one. I'm going to fetch my scrub land. That gets my colors covered. And then I'm going to meddling mage him to Turok. And if they fatal push, then it takes them off him to Turok for a turn, which gives me time to cast my other meddling mage. Misty Rainforest, we did see that one. Another Ponder. Did not shuffle that one either. Okay, I'm going to attack first. See if that gets the him to Turok out. Or the, the fatal push out. And then I can name him to Turok again with my meddling mage. Oh, we're bug. So I suspect this is a stifle knot deck. And one of the sneaky things going on here is that stifle stops Rector. But it, so does him to Turok. So I'm going to keep naming him to Turok with my meddling mage and look for additional ways to interact, which I just found in the form of Cabal Therapy. So I will put these cards back in this order. Then I can Cabal Therapy Stifle and then go off all next turn. Uro. Okay, we're an Uro deck. If you Stifle your Uro in, I'll just kill you now. Yeah, they want to handle this. But they didn't Stifle the Uro in, even though they could have. So they're still respecting the possibility that my deck does something else. I can also just wait a turn. And now that I have two Cabal Therapies, I could actually therapy sacking the Meddling Mage. And then I'm not, I could just name him to Turok and be done with it. Yeah, I'm actually going to do that. This way I don't have to worry about removal into kill all my shit. Him to Turok. And this line means that, oh yeah, they have two hymns over there. Their hand is just Stifle. Him, him. Okay, what this means is I can play Arena Rector right now because I know they can't interact with it. Then I can Therapy Stifle next turn, flashback GG. They can put Uro into play here and still have the mana to hold up Stifle, but we've danced around it unless they draw some BS right now. Okay, so I can start with a Ponder. We'll do that. If I can find some extra protection here, it would be nice. I'll take this brainstorm. Wall therapy, you naming Stifle. Stifla. All right, hand is two lands. And I'm going to attack for one. Get my pound of flesh in. All right, they're just fetching in response. Sure, whatever. Attack with Rector. And I believe this is a Kaya situation. Because Kaya can handle Uro. And I would love to draw a bunch of extra cards right now. I'm gonna name you are already dead. Hell yeah. Let him know. And I'm gonna draw two cards. Opponent gets to scry one, then I get to play Staff of the Storyteller. Not bad. Shout out to Wizards of the Coast for giving me fun things to name with Cabal Therapy. Scryed to the bottom, by the way. And I know there are discard decks, so I'm not gonna draw my card now. And Uro's in the graveyard, but they don't even want to cast it. Oh, they moved to second main, and then remember they had a graveyard. Fair enough. Might as well get it in, even if I'm about to exile it and make a token of it. There he is. The boss. He's reinforced blue to Delta. Oh, it has millions of lands in play. I wonder if this is an Atrax attack. I don't know. Hard to know what they're actually doing here. Aloran wouldn't play him to Turok. I don't know. Stifle tempo isn't really a thing. I still suspect this might be a Dreadnought deck. Uh, I'm going to start with Monastery Mentor. Everything's better with Mentor and Ball. That's just science. Okay, I'll play Monastery Mentor. Fetching in response. Wow, please give me something I can spell Pierce here. That would be so nice. Okay, Mentor's in. And I can Brainstorm here, which will make a token, which will charge the staff. And I still have Kaya activation. Yeah, here we go. I was looking for extra lands because I'm going to briefly have a copy of Uro in play. 
Exile target creature. And this also charges the staff. And I get to draw a card and put a land into play. And then Uro dies because it wasn't escaped. And then I play a land. And I draw a card. Oh yeah. Cool. I'm having a good time. Um, I'm not going to attack. I don't really want to lose my Kaya to a Brazen Borrower backed by Spell Pierce or like some very specific thing that could happen here. And with Mentor, I will start snowballing this game very quickly. Oh, this is Bug Scam. Sure. Okay, it's the Mextortion pile. You got it. I'm going to fetch in response to this. If they have a Stifle, it's fine. I'll get another Tundra. I'm actually doing just fine on black sources and can always use more white. Bee Storm, hide the good stuff, Rector Therapy. Uh, actually, I'm going to put back Ponder and Spell Pierce. Oh shit, I was supposed to put Rector back. What am I even doing? I had a clever idea here, but it. Yeah, I was supposed to put Rector on top and force them to take the Cabal Therapy. Okay, whatever. Luckily, it doesn't matter, and we're easily winning this game, but that was a bad brainstorm. I was half a step ahead of where I needed to be. Another Uro. I think I just plow the front half of this. Yeah. Just bury them. I'm not really worried about grief here. Got me with a daze on turn six. That's fair. I did walk into it. Yeah, I played this turn about as poorly as possible. Luckily, like I said, it doesn't matter, but it was not good. Okay, staff's going to draw a card. Yes, ponder. With lots of mentor stuff. It's found force of will and brainstorm and swords of plowshares. I like swords of plowshares still. And then cabal therapy, my opponent. What do I name here? What do I care about? Okay, they're ready to concede to that. All right. Uh, that was an awkward last turn, but we're okay. We figured it out. This is kind of a graveyard deck. It is kind of a tricky spell deck as well. Rest down has text here. I do kind of like messing with their hand more than messing with their the stack. I want the surgicals for sure. I like fluster. Containment priest is excellent. I don't think mage solid. Prismatic Ending does hit a row. Kind of want one more Thoughtseize in here. The R, Sword Supplusher, is relevant deck. Okay, I'll shave a Meddling Mage for a Thoughtseize. Oh, wait, that wasn't enough. I need another cut. Prismatic Ending will never hit Grief. All right, fine. I think this deck has one or two Sylvan Libraries in the 75 or some such thing. I'm in for this hand. They're also a Wasteland deck and a Stifle deck. Let's see what they got for me. Nothing. Half of the Storyteller. I'd like to see that one. Ball Therapy is going to name... I don't think I named Sylvan Library. They brainstorm in response. They're hiding their best card. I have to just pick some card here. I think it's still just Force of Will. Because getting the Staff of the Storyteller down will be an important piece of the puzzle. Fatal Push, Reanimate, Stifle, Ponder, Wasteland. All right, bummed about the Wasteland. I was prepared to play against Reanimate. Stifle does not affect my hand in a big way right now. Wasted. Ponder. Did not shuffle Ponder. B-Storm, happy to see that. There's the Misty Rainforest. So I can play Staff here, and they could Stifle the Make a Token. Which is not a great use of Stifle, and I'm not even mad about it, so... Go ahead. Staff of the Storyteller is on the stack. Okay. I mean, that Stifle would be... I mean, calling it a two-for-one is not exactly accurate, but it's like... I still get Staff of the Storyteller, which is not really a game object without the token. But the token is a token and a card draw. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to figure out what number for what number that is. Oh, wow. That was a huge punt. They stifled the make a, a counter, which doesn't matter just if you stifle make a token. Yeah, so they, they spewed this token does not need to be in play right now. A little bit, little bit of a bleed there. 
Misty Rainforest. What do we got? Is there an Uro coming my way? They didn't Fatal Push in the end step either. Saving that for something. Tuna Turok. That's pretty good. Took Kaya and Brainstorm. Those were... I mean, the Brainstorm was the best card in my hand. And Kaya was the least relevant card in my hand. Except that Brainstorm was going to put it back in the deck. I'm going to attack for one. And then I'm going to play the other staff of the Storyteller. And then it's party time. Do I want to Cabal Therapy them first? One thing I could do is Surgical something out of their graveyard. Then I see their hand. And then I can guaranteed hit with Cabal Therapy. That's actually kind of interesting. I'm going to take their Wastelands out of their deck right now. And get a look at their hand. Dothy Voidwalker is there. I hate that one. Wasteland, Wasteland. This deck has Pernicious Deed, Force of Wills, and Force of Negations. Days, Strix, Grief, or Reanimates, Shouldered's Edict, One Leobold. Okay. So that's done. And then I'm going to flashback Cabal Therapy. Aiming Dothy Voidwalker, a card I do not want to play against does end up in the graveyard where they can reanimate it. However, I have another surgical extraction. And this clears the way for a staff of the storyteller to charge both my staffs of the storyteller. Just getting this long-term advantage to in. And if they had stifled my make a token trigger instead of my put a story counter trigger two turns ago, I wouldn't have been able to cabal therapy here. So it all, it all matters. There's the reanimate. Here's the surgical. Fatal Push Days in their hand. That Dothy Voidwalker is a one of. Now it's a zero of. Is Fatal Push in the grip? And let's settle into the grind here. Draw a card. Love to find a white source. Nope. Swords of Plowshares instead. At least I know my lands are safe at this point. And we'll see how long they cling to that Fatal Push. Well, therapy. Okay. Draw a card. Alright, I'm rolled up on Plows. I am unlikely to lose to a creature anytime soon. Brainstorm. Bummer. That card's really good. Luckily, their three other reanimates don't work on my Kaya. That's a scary thing playing against these discard reanimate mid-range things, is that if you're a deck with real creatures, like if my mentor ends up in the graveyard somewhere, that could be really bad for me. Staff of the Storyteller. Okay. Um, that one's kind of tricky, because there's a good chance they just shuffled away this Daze it's the mid game but also probably not because i'm on two lands yeah i'm not playing staff into the days that we've looked at already helpful strix disappointing this is the good part of the deck i would be pretty happy to plow most things i have so many plows though i'm gonna spend one on a strix something is happening hard cast force negation deal Come on land any land will do oh no Okay, uh, I will just pass the turn. Now I can just block this thing, settle back in. Screw beats Flood. So as soon as I unlock my lands here, if I'm still alive at that point, I'm just going to go nuts. They shuffled their Ponder. Good, get rid of it. No good cards allowed. They're not attacking. I'm not attacking. Second main Brainstorm. Sure, it's allowed. Luna Delta. We've certainly hit a lot of land drops here. A hard cast grief is actually brutal. That has to be what's happening right now. Son of a biscuit. This is going to take my staff. Yeah, now that sucks. That was my last staff in the deck. And now we're just tick, tick, ticking up to four mana for this rector. Loud grief. Land. Okay, here we go. We're getting there. Pernicious Deed. That is an effective spell against this battlefield. And if they want to take my stabs, they have to kill their Strix. And they don't know that I actually can't charge these stabs anymore. Yeah, this is fine with me. Deal. It's all gone. Everything's gone. Come on, land. Especially a black source. No! Not like this! Now I need a brainstorm before I can do anything? Shit. Another Strix. Reanimate another Strix. Sure. Get your cards and damage where you can. I need a Brainstorm. There's three of them left in the deck. Ponder, help me find Brainstorm, please. Meddling Mage and another Rector. This is not it. Land number four is here, and the land number four shuffles. 
still have to shuffle the library because I need specifically Brainstorm. All right, Ripped Containment Priest, the turn after they cast Reanimate. Cool. Oh, showing off with their own Brainstorms over there. Okay. Whatever, tough guy. And fetching in the end step. You get their damage in and pass the turn with 100 mana available. Okay. And a Black Source makes that pretty good. Being able to take a genuine poke without having to guess. Super nice. I think I'm going to flash in Priest here. It's just something. It also puts me back in control of the race. If they still have this Fatal Push, gets rid of that. If they have a Force of Will, gets rid of that. Sure. Heal. Ponder, help me out. Ponder found a Polluted Delta and two Meddling Mages. I will take the Delta now. And at this point, Stifle's a huge blowout, especially since the top of my deck is two Meddling Mages, which do not help here. This line costs a lot of life to take, but gotta start punching the hole. Be ready as soon as I draw Brainstorm to oogin the shit out of him. Haze, Force of Negation, Fatal Push. Do I care about Force of Negation? That takes my wall therapy away forever. I am going to take the Force of Negation. Haze, Fatal Push. Those were actually the cards that we saw a thousand turns ago. And they're still here now. Casting Swords to Plowshares would change this clock from, like, it doubles the clock to Plow here, but if they follow up with Grief or Uro, I'm going to feel like shit, but I'm going to take my chances on that. Okay, we dodged. Another Rector. I can Cabal Therapy naming Days, or I could just cast a Rector, and that gets days out of the hand, and I have so many of these, and I can't use them till Ugin's in back in my deck anyway. So yeah, let's let's just get days out of their hand. Oh, we got Force of Will out of their hand. That's interesting. What are they doing with that days that they would spend five mana instead? It is still there, right? I didn't get rid of it. Interesting. They must um, assume I have a plan for days, which I don't. Uh, now. I have to concede to this. I think I do. Yeah, fine. All right. I'm out of Planeswalkers. Just drawing both Planeswalkers. That game killed me. Okay, fine. Plague Engineer on Bird keeps their Strixes from doing stuff. Rest Down is fine-ish. Uh, I think this is the deck that I want to submit. Just need to not draw my two Planeswalkers. I can draw one, but not both. On the play, I am going to keep this hand. Kind of bad against Wasteland. That's not even true, though. I'm on the play. Being on the play is good against Wasteland. A lot of cheap interaction here. Got a Cabal Therapy, Grief. But then that turns on Reanimate. Yeah, I think just sitting back with multiple pieces of interaction up is pretty reasonable. Did not shuffle. I'm going to Cabal Therapy, Grief from their hand. That's the thing I'm worried about happening to me right now. Wow, force of will on Cabal Therapy. What the hell? Genuinely don't know what's going on right now. What are they worried about me taking here? I'm going to spell pierce it. But what are they worried about? Okay, uh, this is a potential situation where I would surgical their forces out of their deck and then see their hand and know exactly what they were so worried about. I think I actually do want to do that. Grief. The card I was going to name is there. The Tarok Dread Cantor is there as well. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to name Tarok now. Yeah, I'll take the Tarok. There's a reasonable argument for Brainstorm there and then just make their hand into this crappy hand that they have. But if they play Tarok and then grief me, their hand's not even crappy. And now if they grief me, it's just straight up two for one. Here's the C. Okay, they did grief me pitching Edict. They'll probably take Brainstorm. This is where I rip a staff of the Storyteller and go off. Ball Therapy. And they will Brainstorm in response if I cast this. I'm just going to hold out. Okay, they've committed the Brainstorm. Now I can start deducing what may or may not be in their hand based on how they play the game. Give to Turok. Disappointing. Okay. Opponent's at one card. I am also about to be at one card. Yeah! 
no more secrets. Oh shit, that was a good secret. Baleful Strix. All right, yeah, their hand's a lot better than mine. The good news is, if I find a Rector, I'm ready to pop. Didn't find the land for Uro. Okay, I'm ready to rip with a Rector. Just gotta draw one. Two Griefs and a Strix. This hand is not great. Strix is solid here. There's the land for Uro next turn. Okay. I'm gonna fetch for Scrubland now. I'll leave one fetch land available in case I need to shuffle, but otherwise I will take any small percent of thinning right now. Ugh. All right, I'll leave that in my hand. See if I can induce a grief. Days. All right, I can play around days. Please grief me. Yeah. All right. We flushed out a grief and delayed Uro for a turn. Rector still does it if we rip it right now. Rector, Rector. Oh my god. Opponent is going to tilt off a cliff, and I don't blame them. Here they come. Put it in your deck to draw it, right? Okay, they are dazing me. That's fine. Get underground C. A for days. S. Rector. Wall therapy, you take your grief. And I think what I need to do here is get Ugin and plus on grief. Grief. Get rid of it. Your hand is Tropical Island. Plus on grief puts Ugin way out of any sort of reasonable attack range. And then if they bring back Uro, I can minus three, and then we have a clear board. I don't know if we've seen a card that can answer Ugin. We don't need to speculate. I screenshotted their deck. I don't... Oh, Shouldred's Edict. Which, okay, there are there's a second copy of Shouldred's Edict in the deck. That's what I need to worry about right now. And we've seen one this game. So there's one in the deck and one already in exile. Gotta fade it for a minute. Yeah, I was about to say, I wonder if they're even going to attack Ugin, because it's either you rip the removal spell for it, or it just kills you. And there's not really a nickel and dime version of that interaction. One, two, three. Exile everything. Goodbye, telepathy. Thank you for your service. Opponent's hand is Daze and Force of Negation right now. I'm not inclined to thought seize that hand right now. That doesn't help. Ugin, let's go. Nice. Okay, uh, I get the other one now. So Daze and Force of Negation. Do not answer this, and there is a Cabal Therapy in the graveyard. Going all the way in. Show me that concession. You're fetching in response for reasons unknown. Dazing for good measure. That's allowed. Cabal therapy. Sacking Rector. This endgame is pretty powerful. Might as well counter the therapy. Either way, your hand is up empty and all these cards are gone. I'm gonna get Kaya and I'm gonna I'm gonna lightning bolt rather than draw two cards and scry. Let's just get this game over. Now I have two Planeswalkers, I don't even care if they do draw the thing that answers one of them. And they scooped it up! Two and three, really? I thought we were playing for a positive record. I guess I lost track of the, the score at some point. Oh yeah, yep. Okay, fine. Two, three record. Things that we learned. I mean, Joyami's theory that you can play magic better when you know what's in your opponent's hand is certainly true. And I don't think anyone would ever debate that that was true. It is better to have information than not have information. Whether it's worth a card to gain that information with no other ability, like Thoughtseize gains that information while doing something. Cards like Anointed Peacekeeper and Elite Spellbinder are getting a lot of play. They do something. Sorcerer's Spyglass looks at the hand while doing something. Even Peak draws a card on the way through. The ability to invest a permanent, an actual card, in exchange for information and nothing else, I don't believe that is necessary. But really, the, the deck building sin here is not like telepathy is unplayable. It's that decks have a 
specific number of cards in them. Well built decks do anyway. I mean, you could play 62, but that's suspicious. The problem is, like, I'm going to point to that eight cast matchup where Prismatic Ending, a card that has redefined what cards are good and bad in Legacy just by existing, it turned Chalice of the Void from a huge problem for blue cantrips decks into like kind of an annoying permanent that we have to draw one of our many main deck outs to. And that's where the cut was made to play telepathy. And you could call that a deck building mistake. Like maybe this deck doesn't need the one thought sees, doesn't need the one mentor. And then we're just on four endings and we still have telepathy, but mentor won games. Thought sees was good in games. I'm on three Staff the Storyteller, a card I would love to play four of, and we have these two Telepathies. Wherever you're trimming the fat from, whether it's Ending, Staff, Mentor, more Thought Seizes, whatever, none of those cards are worse than Telepathy. And that's really where the rubber hits the road. Do I want it in my opponent's hand? Yes. Would I pay a blue mana to do it? Yeah, probably. Would I sacrifice my Chalice of the Void matchup to do it? No. And that's the bottom line on effects like this. I'm glad we got to showcase it, though. There were definitely games where Turn 1 Telepathy just laid the groundwork for knowing exactly when we needed to play around at all times, and we were able to thread the needle. That last game, like the last turn of the last game, just shoving Rector into two, mis two cards in hand, just knowing that they couldn't counter the Rector, even though they were both counter spells, was pretty awesome. But even, I, I genuinely think if we just turn these two Telepathy into two Thoughtseize, the deck is better. And I'm not going to keep belaboring that point. I think we have borne out in practice the pros and cons of Telepathy, and we had some fun doing it. And I'm going to call that a successful league. Joyami, thank you for asking me to do this. Everybody, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon and the sponsors, everything that keeps the channel going. And I'll see you next time.